And now, Silicon Angle TV and Wikibon.org present a focus spotlight. Live from Las Vegas at VM World 2011, host John Furrier and Dave Valente illuminating new models for cloud service providers with support from SolidFire. Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante from Wikibon, and this is Silicon Angle's continuous coverage of VMworld Live 2011. We're in day three, and we are in the cloud service provider spotlight. These spotlights are in-depth segments designed to help practitioners understand some of the key trends that are going on. We've been following the cloud service segment for a number of years now at Silicon Angle and Wikibon, and uh, we have a great uh, pair of guests here from VirtuStream. Rodney Rogers is the chairman and, and CEO. Rodney, welcome, thanks for coming thanks. on theCUBE. And Matt Thur is a senior VP and solutions architect. Thank you guys for coming on. Uh, we're going to talk about um, your business. We're going to talk about storage, because I know that's a big challenge. Um, if we have time, we can talk a little bit about security, but um, uh, Rodney, I wonder if you could start by uh, telling us a little bit about VirtuStream and what you guys do and you know, what's unique about your company. Sure, so VirtuStream is a cloud service provider that uh, it's a relatively young company. We were started in, in uh, January of 2009. Uh, we released our, our enterprise cloud about a year ago and our claim to fame is that we provision compute and infrastructure at a sub VM level. So most all of our competitors, in fact all of our competitors out there uh, uh, provision compute via VM or VM hour. And what we do is we break the VM down to a more granular level, we combine it uh, into something we call an infrastructure unit, which is a combination of compute, RAM, embedded network bandwidth, and embedded storage IOPS. And what that allows us to do is essentially, in so many words, virtualize a VM. We use, uh, we have developed our management layer, our cloud OS, above the hypervisor level, where multi, we support multi-hypervisors. Uh, we support uh, ESX for our, our VM-based solution, VMware-based solution, and KVM for our open source-based solutions. But we use our resource pooling algorithms and policy management algorithms so that we aggregate our clients' consumption across all workload requirements. So we take this more granular slice of a VM and then aggregate that usage so we get to true consumption. We bill our clients, we provision, meter, and bill via a method by what they actually consume versus what they're allocated to consume. And that really, at the end of the day, is our core differentiator. And I'll talk a little bit more about you, what that, how that manifests itself. Just to understand that, you, 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 you charge by the drink. We do. It's even really if, even the if there's an allocation there that they can take advantage of, if they don't use it, they don't pay for it. That's correct. VMs come in all, all shapes and sizes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, and, and essentially what a VM is, is it's an allocated amount uh, of compute. What we do is break that down, aggregate our clients' usage across all of their demand, and then bill them for how that. How granular can you get? Uh, well, we define the infrastructure unit by uh, uh, a measure of compute, um, RAM, network, and bandwidth. 200 mega megahertz of compute, 760 megabytes of uh, RAM, and we do not publish the uh, bandwidth and I.O. Components. Okay, and I buy those in chunks, is that yeah, right? We buy them by I.U., so we will go out to a client requirement, we will size their overall requirements via I.U. We have a couple of different flavors of them. We have a basic I.U. and we have an enterprise I.U. or core I.U that in includes such things as guaranteed uh, uh, response time, guaranteed throughput, uh, embedded data replication, that type of thing. So, um, we've been talking a lot on the, the Cube about this theme of cloud service providers and the innovation that's going on in cloud service providers. You started your company in the dead middle of the worst recession in our lifetimes, most of our lifetimes, um, and at the time, I mean, literally, we had clients in the Wikibon community cutting budgets by 70%. Right. Um, uh, uh, many of those are financial institutions, but it really across the board, deep, deep cuts. And since then, they've held them flat. Right. So we went zoop and flat. Right. Un unlike the Dow, which of course is bouncing around right. like crazy now, but they right. just, uh, now I presume that your budgets have been going up. I mean, you're investing in a company, so you guys are innovating. And so um, I think the, the traditional IT shops can learn a lot from, from you guys. Well, I think you know we really believe in the IP, and it's a great point. It was a surreal feeling to see the Dow, you know, I think cross under 7,000 as we were all of three months old. Must have been getting um, a little hairy there. Uh, from, from that standpoint, it was a bizarre time. Yeah. But uh, we have some great investors in our, in our uh, syndicate. Intel is an investor. Uh, and so their technical diligence on us and our ability to withstand that diligence was very heartening in the midst of you know, uh, 
uh, of all this um, you know, quagmire in terms of the macro markets. At the end of the day, we've ultimately got our momentum on two fronts, and it really comes down to that level of efficiency, that granulation giving us a level of efficiency that's unfound. We sort of service two worlds. The native web app, web 2.0, uh, greenfield application market, our infrastructure unit methodology and resource pooling allows us to fundamentally size and thus price more efficiently than typical commodity cloud or true public cloud uh, producers. We're also a true multi-tenant. And the enterprise cloud side, when you're dealing with enterprise uh, applications or legacy applications, very high transaction, uh, uh, memory intensive type of applications, having the ability to control IOPS, which we do through our entire uh, architecture, gives us the ability to SLA in a superior fashion than even private cloud providers. So it's not only a price game, it's the ability to guarantee throughput response time so that it can give an enterprise CIO the peace of mind that they can put a heavyweight legacy back office enterprise app in a production environment in the cloud. All right, that's outstanding. So uh, thank you for that description. I want to talk about, Matt, I want to talk about storage. Um, you got to architect this stuff. I presume storage is a big challenge. Storage is a challenge for everybody who comes to this event. Uh, talk about your storage and talk about some of the trends you're seeing um, right. and then we'll, I, I want to get into what that means for your customers. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, so storage has is, is probably been this, the single biggest uh, pain point we found among our, our customers as, a, as, as consultants and, and was probably one of the single biggest design factors when we were designing our, our enterprise cloud. Why was it such a pain point? Well, so, you know, as the explosion of, there, there's been two two trends in the industry, right? There's, there's the massive explosion of just data. There's raw bits, it's, it's almost exponential in size, the amount of data that's being generated on a daily basis, right? And you throw in virtualization, and the growth that that is doing is performance growth. The amount of IOs that are necessary to run these massively consolidated systems, right? The disk manufacturers have been great in expanding the space, right? You have one terabyte drive, two terabyte drives, three terabyte drives coming out. Unfortunately, We've got 15,000 RPM drives, and we've had them for 15 years, and that's what drives performance, right? And we've been stuck there. So to, to solve uh, the performance problem, you throw more and more and more spindles, right? And you end up in very inefficient space. So your ratio of space to, to I.O. Uh, is, is just way off. So you have a huge access density problem. A exactly. You have this great declining cost per bit, but you can't take advantage of it because you're throwing hardware at the yeah, yeah, I mean, your data's there, but you can't get to it. Yeah, okay. Right. So, where we're looking at, of course, is at, at the newer technologies, obviously flash, SSD, right? Which is, uh, uh, has somewhat inverted the problem, right? You have massive amounts of I.O., not as much space, though with the, uh, the newer size SSD drives coming out, the 600 gig SSD drives, and, and I've seen uh, announcements around one terabyte SSD drives, and you start getting much more in balance, and you can go ahead and provide this massive amount of performance along with the appropriately ratioed amount of space uh, to, to our providers. So uh, really the, the new technologies around SSDs, the other problem that we have is a lot of traditional storage architectures where you're dealing with one or two storage processors with trays of disk behind it. When you start throwing SSD into there, what you end up with is that those storage processors now become the bottleneck. Right, so. Uh, they just don't have the bandwidth to, to process they, they, that. They don't have the processor or the bandwidth to do it. Yeah, so right. squeezing a balloon. So, yeah. so uh, some of the new architectures, some of the RAIN, or redundant array of independent node architectures that are coming out there, uh, which go ahead and allow the, the storage processors to scale linearly along with the, with the space and the IO, IO capacity uh, are really where we're, we're, we're feeling is the future of, of the storage technologies. So there's a real spectrum of flash devices coming out. You have the you know, sort of stick drives in an, in an EMC array, which right. is you know, that's the, 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 the bandwidth, controller bandwidth limitation that you talked about. You've got these all flash arrays coming out, um, guys like SolidFire and Pure, and then you've got the Fusion I.O. memory extension. Do you see yourselves using all of those, or is, are you sort of leaning toward one architecture? Does it depend on the application? Well, you know, they, there's, there's use cases for all of them. Huh? Um, so something like a Fusion I.O., right, where you may have a, a card in a server, uh, is a great way to uh, alleviate concerns about when you hit memory pressure and memory swap. Right, so maybe you put a Fusion I.O. card in your servers to alleviate that as a use case. Great use case for that kind of technology. Uh, the, uh, so if you've got traditional arrays, um, like an EMC, putting in, uh, putting in their SSDs and their flash cache, right? So now where your caches are, are, are terabytes in size. And then of course, you know, the newer pure SSD based technologies such as, as SolidFire, 
um, where you can go ahead and have these these rain configurations with, with pure SSD and, and massive amounts of throughput with relatively low power and space consumption as well, which is, is of course, as a service provider, a huge concern, right? The, the, the space and the power you're pulling in the data center, you know, the, the electricity vendors, the, they're, they're not building a whole lot of new, more power plants, right? So you end up power constrained there in your data centers. So our analysis suggests that the, the, the all flash lined up to a high performance uh, array, the, the all flash is actually going to be less expensive because of the better utilization. I don't know if you've gone that deep and done that analysis yet. Have, we, have you seen the same things? We, we've done, we've done a, a, a fairly deep analysis. Uh, you know, I, I ran a statistical data set around about 40 terabytes of, of active data. Uh, and we found that we could drive the, uh, the, the flash costs down into uh, to sub-spinning sub disk costs. Which is really interesting, right? You don't think in those terms. Right. That was a bit flip for it's, me when I saw the numbers. And then, but well, what's, we, what's, we, what's more interesting is what that means for you. Uh, uh, well, let me ask you this. How do you guarantee today quality of service? All right, so we, there's, uh, we, we, have, we have to do it through the entire chain, right? So there's, we have technology and, 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 uh, and software and tools that you know, guarantee it for all from the hypervisor all the way through the fabric, all the way down to the storage system. And there's a variety of techniques that we have to use to do that. Um, and where we're finding though is some of the, the newer technologies uh, uh, where I.O. control and quality of service is now being built into the storage vendors technology it is really complementing um, our ability and our tools and technology which guarantee it from the hypervisor all the way down through the chain. Um, it's been traditionally a little more difficult down there at the, uh, the traditional spinning disk level to do that. And so from a business model standpoint, you can, can, you can, can you guarantee that quality of service by customer and how does Flash sort of change your ability to add new value? Well, I think it's creative. Uh, you know, from the, from the perspective of the storage component, ultimately our focus is on that full control of IOPS, right? So storage is one component within that. Um, the ability to control it through the host cards and through the network itself the ability to actually get a more robust set of IOPS out of our storage component uh, solutions will give us the ability to have more flexibility in terms of how we control that through the entire architecture. Um, so we're excited about the new innovations there. We feel ultimately that core definition of our infrastructure unit will afford us the ability for that superior SLA as all of the various component horsepower matures and becomes more of it more so readily available. Of, so you got a couple of advantages going for you. You're, you're, you're on the cusp of this, you're small, that's the disadvantage, but you're on the cusp of these trends. You're probably faster than the big whales, no I, doubt. I tend to yeah. say we're young, not small. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. It's a little marketing. And, uh, fair enough. And, um, and, and, and you're trying to disrupt. Uh, we are. Yeah, so talk we about are. the company a little bit in terms of uh, Head count, any metrics you can give us? Uh, where sure. are you at? Um, we have uh, about 140 employees today. We're roughly split between the United States and the UK. Uh, our original founding uh, was in both regions, so we're a bit of a, a cross-Atlantic play. We have two data centers in the United States, one in Vienna, Virginia, and one in uh, San Francisco, and two data centers in London, uh, offices in New York, headquartered in Washington, Atlanta, and San Francisco. Most of our software product development occurs in San Francisco and Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. And, and what was your headcount? 140. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, that's good size. That's sizable. Yeah. yeah We've grown quickly. Yeah. We've gotten a lot of uh, traction out of the gate. You know, one of the things that is somewhat of uh, uh, you know an issue in the venture growth cloud provision or cloud space is revenue traction. You know, there's a lot of companies out there. There's 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 been a uh, quite a group of companies that were sort of founded in that 2006 type of time frame to, uh, all the way till sort of when we were one of the later uh, entrants to the space, but there, there is a lot of buzz around IP, around product, around proof of concept. How that's translating to revenue is somewhat of an unknown in the space. Uh, we're very proud of the revenue traction that we've gotten. We can't publish it, but I wish we could. Uh, we, we, we really have uh, done well in that regard. We, we have, uh, our largest client is a mid Fortune 500, uh, private company, uh, a large uh, consumer products company that we run their entire compute topography on our cloud from Exchange all the way up to a 2,700 user production instance of SAP, uh, all in our extreme cloud. So we've, we're really excited uh, and uh, just have a lot of work to do to continue to, the, to realize our vision. All right, VirtuStream, great story. Uh, Rodney and Matt, thanks very Thank much you. for coming on theCUBE and uh, sharing your insights. Uh, with